this is an Omicron compact fluorescent lamp, well not that compact to be honest, that I found in um, found being chucked out for recycling. In fact there are two of them. As you can see they've been in the pack for quite a while. The Omicron website disappeared in 2012 so I've no idea how old these are. They've probably been languishing in someone's cupboard for years and they've just chucked them out. And to be honest with good reason you'll see why in a moment when I start one up. But what caught my eye on these was the fact that they are dimmable fluorescents. So uh, we'll we'll see how they um, we'll see how they fare with that in a moment. First of all, let's get one out of the pack, out of the very brittle pack. You see, it's one of the earlier style of compact fluorescents. It's rated at 14 watts. If you compare that with an 11 watt Philips one, you see it's quite a bit quite a bit bigger but we'll also compare with this as well in a second because there's not much else to look at on the outside you can see it's one of these early ones with a hard glass case but I'm going to plug it in now and we'll see how bright it is and for this test I'm also going to use this Minilux 2 light meter first of all let's knock the, the big light off and I'll knock on the Omicron. As you can see, it's it's not very bright. If you compare it with the the 60 watt Osram there, or even the Philips. I'm going to give those two a few minutes to warm up and we'll see what their what their brightness is like when they uh, when they get to full brightness and see how they compare right that seems to be about as high as they're going to get well it has taken a long time for them to get there let's try viewing let's see what the the figure is for just the omicron and this is measured in lux and it's a thousand lux per division so it's two four okay That's about 3,000 lux for the Omicron. About the same again for the 11 watt Philips. And slightly lower for the 60 watt Osram. It's about 2,600. So it gets there in the end, but you know, it's, it's brighter than a 60 watt bulb, but it shouldn't take 10 minutes, quarter an hour to get that bright. But like I said, it's dimmable. It turns out they're absolutely right. It is dimmable. Certainly more dimmable than that one. So it's a dimmable compact fluorescent lamp. Let's take a look inside. Well, I've got it open with careful use of a multi tool. I sliced that off the bottom, cut up the side. It turns out I could have just popped that off there just with a screwdriver in that in that edge, but never mind. And there's the board and I didn't manage to get that off in one piece because it's glued very firmly onto this and as you can see it is glass and inside then you've got one of these conventional three u-shaped fluorescent tube obviously that's pretty standard this I'm interested in Here's the schematic for the Omicron, and if you are confused by it, well that makes two of us because I don't understand it either. It was a tricky one to work out the schematic for as there were some components which had the same ID such as C7, components with odd substitutions such as C2 which is a diode, locations which weren't even populated such as D12 and plenty of others with no ID at all which have just allocated spare numbers to such as D4. By the way if you're watching this video on a device which has all the brightness and resolution of a Halloween pumpkin a link to the schematic is in the video description. You know like it was in the last video you were whining about before you deleted your comment and replaced it with a thumbs down. Anyway, the one thing that stands out to me as odd is the input bridge rectifier, which uses eight diodes instead of four, with capacitors bridging the inner pairs of diodes that are connected to the AC inputs. 
The rest of the circuit uses a transistor pair that drives two transformers, one connected directly to the tube, and apparently putting a heat of voltage out across each end, driven from an input via C6, and the other is this simple toroid that has two two-turn windings plus a larger eight-turn winding. By the way, the reason this is half depopulated is because it was such a dense board I had to strip a lot of this out to be able to work out the rest. How does that compare with the Philips? which clearly isn't dimmable. Here's the schematic for that one, and I've tried to position the parts to match the Omicron schematic. Again, we've got the two transformer design, although this time the heater current comes from a current limiting capacitor in series with the heaters. There are quite a few extra components in the transistor drive section, and the wiring of the simple transformer appears to be rearranged, although this time it is a proper transformer, not just a loosely wound coil. But notes that this time the bridge rectifier is an ordinary four diode job. Could that be the difference? I don't know, but what I do have for you is one more CFL. This is an Osram Dulux EL Vario 23 watt, which has two separate brightness settings. To flip between them, you simply turn the power off and quickly turn it back on again. I have two of these, both of which are starting to fail as they often drop back to dim mode and take a few attempts to get them to run at full brightness from the start. Given that, I've decided to sacrifice one of them. Before I do though, let's see how it behaves on a dimmer. Not well. Here it is gutted. It's a very neat layout with this slender glass fuse feeding it. But there are no component IDs on the board whatsoever, so I've had to make up the numbering as I went along and hopefully keep track of what's what. Here's the schematic, and it's completely different to the previous two. There's still a dropper cap for the heater, same as the Philips, but the transistors have been replaced with MOSFETs driven by an L6572 smart ballast controller. The datasheet schematic seems simple enough, and this is all you need for the chip to be able to switch between brightness settings, but the Osram version's got extra gubbins thrown into the mix, including two extra inductors, plus an extra JFET circuit driving the pin responsible for the lower brightness setting, even though all that actually needs is a resistor down to ground. Still, I'm sure there was method in the madness. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. No more testing and bits and pieces on this because it's all mains voltage and I've basically trashed them anyway trying to, uh, trying to get the schematics. So I hope you found what I have done enlightening. Thanks for watching.